Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. Alright, and today we are going to take a look at Colossal, a solo RPG adventure. This was just delivered uh, from Kickstarter, it was a Kickstarter campaign that I backed, I think it was sometime last year, pretty quick in the delivery, so that was nice. And what I got with my pledge is the hardback book, a little journal, and a deck of cards. So let's read a little bit about what Colossal is here. This says, Welcome to the world of Colossal. Prepare to get lost in a world of your own imagination, steered by the rules within this book. This is a solo role-playing game, a game you can play by yourself. Write your character's journal as they explore the strange lands of Colossal, a castle so colossal that fields, valleys, mountains, and even oceans rest within its rooms. Discover four incredible character classes and a simple rule set. All you need to embark on this grand adventure is a pen, paper, and a deck of playing cards. Play it alone with the rules in this book, or use the world of Colossal and the classes as the setting for your next multiplayer RPG adventure. But although the rooms of the Colossal are inviting, beware the rooks, strange lumbering stone automatons that patrol and guard the world's mysteries. What will you discover as you venture deep into the Colossal? I would say that this is firmly in the camp of a journaling game. There isn't so much of a game here as there is a way to present you with information. It provides you with the dots that you will that you're going to need to connect in order to write out your journal. And the fun of this game will lie in how fun you find journaling. And you can use, of course, any journal. This is the journal that came with the Kickstarter. But you are going to be drawing cards to represent certain encounters and having certain combat and non-combat encounters and events. And then connecting the dots between those things to write a story where you are going through chapters of this character's life as they are exploring the huge internal world of the Colossal. Colossal, a colossus castle with rooms so big that they can contain entire oceans. And those are called the room lands. The one thing, I think the two things this game really has going for it are one, its setting is super creative and evocative. I love it. And I'll say three things. Three is the art. The art is gorgeous. I want to see an animated film <laughs> using this art. And also its simplicity. It's a very simple game. It's a very simple rules system. And everything about this game is... It's a story forward game. All of the rules are there to push the narrative forward and to give you prompts and ideas to write a story on. It's kind of a story generating RPG. So we do get a little bit of a background in what is a solo RPG and our basic gameplay rules. A nice overview of the, um, the world of Colossal. The Colossal is an impossibly massive castle. The interior of which is so large that mountains, valleys, towns, cities, and even oceans fill its rooms. The ceilings and roof are so high that they are beyond sight, shrouded by the misty expanse of the sky that sits within its vaulted heights. There seems to be no finding the exterior of the castle, though many adventurers have tried, crossing continental distances only to reach the wall of another room. For those who have ventured past a wall, they find only more rooms on the other side, with new lands stretching off far into the distance. That said, many features you would expect to find, um, many features you would, you would expect from the Colossal's normal-sized counterparts are present, such as staircases, windows, doorways, balconies, towering statues, burning braziers, pillars disappearing into the clouds, and long, gloomy corridors. So there are these massive braziers that actually are on like this attached somewhere in the ceiling of these places of these giant land sized rooms that act as suns and moons and stars. Really neat setting. 
uh, one of the main goals is to get to the rooftops and the rooftops are a special secret area in the game that you're trying to find the battlements they are called to where you can get a better vantage point of the size of the castle and kind of see what there is to see and in this game you play as an explorer these people who are always on the lookout to find the edges of this world and to get to the rooftops to get to the battlements and trying to survive long enough to figure out the mysteries of the castle of the colossal so the first thing we're going to do here is, is uh, create a character and the character creation is quite simple i do need to grab my character sheet here i did print some off Okay, so here we have our character sheet. I did kind of spend a little more money to get the card back book and because I thought it would lay flat better, but I'm a little disappointed in the way that it's put together. I wish it had a better binding that would allow it to lay completely flat. But here we have our uh, character sheet. We have a name, a class, a calling. We have our, our look our nature, some notes, and then you can keep track of your inventory, which is equipment and treasures. Very, very simple game. And the way that you create your character is quite simple. You go through, you find out a calling, a nature, a class, and a weapon. I also went ahead and purchased the playing cards for the game. Now you can use a regular deck of playing cards. That was perfectly fine. And, but these came and these have a little bit of art on the card. And so that is why I decided to purchase the cards. They aren't the best playing cards. The, the, the surface quality is really nice. The, the edges are really rough. It's like kind of a rough cut. And I'm not particularly thrilled with the quality of the playing cards. I wish, I wish it was just a better quality. Just kind of like a high quality bicycle deck is a much better quality. But... I do really like that the uh, cards all have some art on them and um, it's a nice addition. It's a nice addition, but is obviously not necessary. So I have given this a pretty good shuffle. We'll just give it one quick shuffle on camera here. Give that a couple cuts. All right. So the first thing that we need to do to create a character is come up with a calling. Now you can make this up on your own or you can draw a card. And since we have this nice page in this book with all of these different callings, we are going to draw a card. So let's see what our calling is. It is a three. So with a three and a four we have here, you have a vision as you sleep one night. Far across the lands in a room that looks nothing like the room your village resides in is a tower. The tower looks like it might have been a rook once. A thin and impossibly tall with its slender arms by its sides. In your vision, you see a weapon in a room at the very top of the tower, waiting, calling for you. Your village has been besieged by rooks lately. Your hunters are stretched thin. Maybe if you could reach this mythical place, you might be able to save your village. Okay, so that is our calling. So rooks in this game are kind of like the main kinds of enemies. And they are these stone structures, the, these automatons, and they're all powered by what is kind of like the only magic in the world. Some of them are small. Some of them are so small that humans keep them as little pets, as rooklings. But the rooks are kind of what you are fighting against. And as you can see, the interior of the rooks can be a whole kind of dungeon where you can have like a boiler room and traps and all kinds of things and they hold within them powerful weapons and magical items and that kind of thing so you are kind of wanting to hunt rooks while also avoiding them making sure you don't get hurt by them but the rooks are kind of like the key the, uh, of the mystery to this world all right so i just wrote in our calling here uh, we had a vision of a weapon at the top of a tall rook tower we we're called in our vision to find the tower and the weapon and then perhaps it can be used to defend our village against the attacking rooks okay so that is our calling the next thing we need to come up with is our nature 
and our nature is just kind of a way that we use to govern how our character acts and reacts to certain situations on our adventure. So we drew a two, so an ace and a two. We are happy-go-lucky, extremely optimistic, and fun. All right, that is a good nature. So we will want to keep this in mind as we come across different other characters and situations that we are optimistic, good-natured, and fun-loving. But of course, that doesn't mean that we're uh, goofy or foolish. You know, I think it just means that we look for the good things in life through the bad, but recognize that sometimes, you know, bad things are going to happen. So the next thing you want to pick is your character's class. And the class is really just going to kind of give you a story idea about your character. And it's also going to dictate how many cards you draw during your exploration phase and during your combat phase. And the game comes with four different classes. So we have the armed. They have an ex exploration score of three and a combat score of four. So the armed quite literally have an arm of a rook connected to them via a complex ritual attuning its intention to them. The armed are proficient in melee combat and are highly capable adventurers. They are warriors. An armed adventurer could have any type of arm, a blade, a hand, a cannon, a strange machine. The user doesn't yet understand. If the arm has a hand or the ability to hold items, it can be used to carry an additional weapon if you have one. So basically the arm, we have a, uh, an arm of a rook attached to our bodies that we can use as our weapon. And then we're gonna get a couple of uh, story traits that you have to think about for your character. And then uh, different, uh, different questions and different prompts it asks you about each character. So we're just gonna go over the classes and I'll pick a class off, off camera and then we'll talk about it. Um, the next character class is the Followed, and they have an exploration score of 5 and a combat score of 3, and the Followed have a small rook companion, like a pet or familiar that follows them and their commands. These rooklings are found in the cores of larger rooks, as yet it is not known why. They display a base level of sentience akin to that of a dog or a cat, and can form deep and personal bonds with their human companions. The following are the, the followed are excellent rangers, pathfinders, and navigators. Okay, then the next class after that is the helmed. They're pretty low on exploration, but this is like your main combat class here. The helmed harvest a piece of strange machinery from the very core of a rook. And using rituals and a real working understanding of the crystal patterns and stones, they are able to create a helm that can be worn and operated, granting them the magical abilities of the rook it was harvested from. And then finally here we have the mounted, and this is our main kind of exploration class where you're going to be drawing five exploration cards and you also have a combat score of two. The mounted ride an adapted mechanism taken from rook parts as a vehicle or mount to allow them easily to, to allow them easier traversal across the land and sea of the colossal. Typically, this involves taking a part of the rook responsible for its locomotion and disconnecting it from the main body and turning it into something that can be operated with crude controls, mechanisms, and levers. The mounted mounts can vary from horse-like creatures to boats and even bikes. So that is a class that kind of comes with its own vehicle, even uh, a boat, because there are ocean, there is ocean exploration in this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a class and we'll be right back with it. Okay, so I have chosen to be um, the mounted. So I get a starting vehicle. So this is that like the hound, uh, the mounted are gifted rooksmiths with a basic understanding of their functionality. But unlike the helmed, who have an understanding of the magical circuitry and therefore magical abilities of a rook, the mounted have a mechanical one. The mounted are nomads and scavengers, constantly on the hunt for failed or ancient decaying rooks and harvesting parts for their own mount, partly to upgrade and partly to just keep it going, as mounts require constant maintenance, like off-road vehicles. A mounted mount is their heart in their life. Like looking after a bike or a beloved car, it is everything. It is their freedom. 
So I'm saying that I am from a village of tinkers and mechanics and we're always scrounging for parts to make new contraptions. And my uncle Silas, he went out to investigate a rumored scrap heap to the east and has not returned. And so that is the, that's the catalyst to get us out of the village and to go and look for him. And my name Carson, my name is Carson of the One Wheels. And uh, my contraption here, my vehicle is a single giant uh, wheel, like this super rugged kind of off-road wheel with these giant treads. Uh, this thing has traction like you wouldn't believe. It has a super powerful engine on the interior and I sit within the wheel and it goes around me and it balances by some kind of like gyroscopic uh, mechanism or technology. And my weapon is I have this giant arm that is attached to the axis and the spokes of this huge wheel. And it is a giant spiked battling ram. And it can actually move like kind of all around our wheel. You know, the wheel can roll and then the spike can go down and launch me in the air and do all kinds of things. So that is going to be a really fun vehicle to explore this world in. And uh, let's see, my exploration score is a five and my combat score is a two. And so this just gives you a little bit more about your character's traits and then kind of like creating your character. It gives you some kind of story prompts to come up with background information and whatnot. And then uh, this page here is just a little bit about magic in the world. So you aren't really magic. There isn't really magic like sorcery in this world. The magic is kind of innately part of the rooks of their mechanisms of their machinery. And it gives you again more ideas about your story. So magic is a powerful, is a power unique to the rooks and comes from stones bonded in ancient circuitry known as rook stones found deep within their bodies. Rook stones come in three varieties, electric, rumble, and ice. Every rook will either have one of these three magical qualities or no magical abilities because its rook stone is broken or missing. Perhaps its rook stone has been scavenged by one of the mounted and attached to their own vehicle. So then you kind of get into the regular rules here. You get into the exploration rules and how you will draw cards to explore and then almost the entire rest of the book is filled with different charts that you're going to access once you draw your card to kind of figure out what you see and things that give you story prompts to write in your journal about your adventure and you can come across items different events you can explore the ocean and there's an exploration chart for exploring the ocean you can come across cities and then when you come across cities you will draw additional cards to come up with different like ideas for different kinds of guilds uh, different buildings within the city you have your hunters guild you have a housing district your rookling crush your uh, taverns there are houses there is ideas for fast travel creche I'm not sure how you how to say that word I'll have to look that up I probably said it wrong, but uh, you have a merchant where you can buy special items like gauntlets, electric swords, turtle shell armor, um, a glider. And then finally, this is the part where you finally reach the battlements and you get to the top, you get to kind of like one of your main goals. And this is that not to read this section until your character has reached the battlements in their adventure. So I'm gonna look past that here. And then we get kind of a little map of some of the explored room lands, the known room lands there. And then we get into our combat section. And combat begins when you draw a card for an opponent, a person or a rook in your exploration phase and a, 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 as a character decide to engage. When this happens, the combat phase starts and the rules on these pages apply. Note, if you draw multiple rook cards, they are ignored. You will only ever face one rook at a time. And the mounted, it says that as my character class, I am able to go up and fight rooks in my vehicle. And then once you get to uh, this section here, once you get to your combat section, this shows you how you're gonna draw cards and apply the, uh, the charts and look up the charts based on those cards to come up with your unique thing that you are going to be fighting. 
and how it attacks you and what it does. And then again, more story prompts to come up with ideas to uh, to fight. So let's let's uh, do a sample a sample exploration phase here. Let's see what happens. So my exploration is a five. So that means I draw five exploration cards and I lay those out in front of me and then kind of look at them all to come up with a story. So in our journal here, you know, we have our day one of our journey, 0101, and we are setting out to find our uncle Cyrus. So let's see here, setting out to find our uncle Silas to the east. So who knows what we're going to find to the east. And this is kind of, this is our first chapter. So each exploration phase is a chapter in your character's life. So we have an Eight of Hearts, a Four of Spades, a Jack of Diamonds, a King of Hearts, and a Seven of Diamonds. So if you look closely at the art on the card, it is going to kind of give you an idea of what you are going to find. So on this chapter of our character's life, we come across a village and some ancient runes some kind of item maybe attached to a massive rook and some gargoyles so what we can do is we can look at the various charts and kind of come up together or come up to, uh, with the story so in eight of hearts we have uh, here we look at the eight and the heart means that it's safe so this is that we have come across a small settlement maybe a farming village the buildings are all wooden and skins uh, like most small settlements, it is safe. So draw an item card to see what can be found here. Okay, so we could draw another card to figure out an item. And we can look at this item chart here. And we found some kind of treasure for trading. So we discovered something to trade. Um, we can look at the ancient runes here. And um, they are somewhat intact. Ruins of a people you've never heard of. Ruins of people ruins of a people you've never heard of. The unfamiliar inscriptions and architecture suggest these people lived a very long time ago. Draw an event card for something else to happen here. Okay, so maybe the village is built on top of the ruins. You know, uh, the ruins are below and the village, they've started to build on top of them. And that is kind of like this village's, their people continue to build on top as their ancestors have died they've just continued to stack their buildings on top of one another building up creating this kind of like geographical arch archaeological layer of their history something like that and then we can draw an event right um draw an event for something else to happen here at two and we um, came across a storm. So we went in to hide in the ruins because the ruins were closer to the ground level. It was easier to get into them, uh, harder to get into the village that was built on top. And the ruins, we did find something here. We found a weapon in the ruins while we were hiding from the storm. So what kind of weapon did we find? Uh, let's say we found like a little kind of like mechanical crossbow or something like that. So we found our crossbow in the ruins and all of a sudden we hear this like big thumping sound. The ruin starts to shake. Maybe some rubble starts to fall on our head and we need to run out into the storm and we look up and there's this massive rook and um, we get into our vehicle and all of a sudden screeching from out of the uh, sky comes some gargoyles and a screech from the sky the beat of heavy wings gargoyles you thought they were just stories you were told as a child apparently not it grabs you by the shoulders and starts to carry you upward um, if it is a diamond it takes you up to its nest in the rafters of the ceiling there is no fighting a gargoyle so we are in the rafters of this ceiling so it's taken us from our vehicle and it, luckily it has taken us out of danger of the massive rook 
but now we are in the rafters of the ceiling. Now, one thing about this game is there is a uh, patron, a Patreon for it, and one of the things that the Patreon uh, does at a certain level, I, I think there's only a $3 level, and I have joined because I do like this game quite a bit, is you are getting some supplemental materials. You're getting some, uh, basically like some DLC or some, some uh, expansions. And one of the expansions is the rafters. And we can read about the rafters and being taken, taken up to the land of the gargoyles for more details. And then if you don't have that, you can just kind of make up what happens from there. So that is basically what you would want to do is you can't fight the gargoyles. Uh, we could play that maybe we outran the gargoyles in our vehicle because we had gotten in our vehicle and maybe the gargoyles missed us. And then we could go ahead and face off against a massive rook going to that combat uh, chapter and then figuring out you know what kind of rook it was at attacking us how we were going to attack it but as you can see there are all kinds of different things to explore there are different entities to meet different events to um, encounter and there are traps you know, eventually you're going to come across a city on one of these charts here, and then you will have a city that you can continue to uh, travel to. So it's a very simple game, and it really is all about writing. It's all about creating story prompts and connecting the dots with random encounters. So just know that, you know, going in, this is kind of less of a less of a mechanical game and more of a way to generate story. And that is kind of, you know, you, you do have that, that's at one end of the spectrum for a solo RPG. And then something like, you know, Scarlet Heroes, which we're also playing, is on the other end of that spectrum. And so I would just take those cards and write down here in my journal, what happened to me during this chapter of my journey. If I went into combat, with that massive rook, I could write down the description of the combat, and then maybe that combat or being taken away by those gargoyles would, uh, we would have like a story prompt where we would then go into the next chapter, draw a new set of exploration cards to figure out what happened to us from there, and then just continue to uh, journal in until your character uh, dies or maybe uh, finds what it's looking for. That kind of thing it does the book does suggest some things that might happen when your character dies like maybe uh, you hand your journal over to another player who's playing colossal and and they start as kind of an error of your character or maybe a friend who uh, picks up where you left off that kind of thing so you can have a shared journal between different people playing the game but uh, overall this is a neat game and if you if you're into journaling games i think this is a pretty good one and it has some nice art it has a fantastic setting and i am excited to see a continuing development of this world and supplements and more charts to add to it so i hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at colossal a solo rpg and we should actually say who that's from and that's from uh, nick angel and he was the writer and the um, illustrator. Uh, amazing illustrations. I absolutely love the drawing. I love his style. He's got such an inviting and evocative style. It really makes me want to uh, dive into this world to see what I can discover. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.